When you want to store some value in React, you have three choices. Local variable, a state, and a ref. In this simple counter example, after only two user clicks, we can see that each render and console output are different. Those differences are subtle, so it's hard to decide in what precise circumstances you should choose one option over the other. By the end of this video, we'll install in your brain a very simple concept that will help you understand and remember differences between state and ref. Quick but important recap. From my previous video on set state, you might already remember differences between state and local variable. First, state is preserved between renders, so each time new render is triggered, your local variable is wiped out and overridden by the declared initial value. While state only loads initial value in first render, and in each consecutive render it gets preserved value from the outside memory managed by React. Second, calling set state is asynchronous, so contrary to a local variable, reading the state after it's set will not show us the most up-to-date value. Lastly, by calling set state, we tell React to re-render the component, so we will get the correct value in the rendered HTML, while assigning local variable doesn't trigger new render. Now let's focus on state versus ref. There is this one simple idea that have very important consequences. It will help us remember key differences between state and ref and deduct most important rule of using refs without trying to remember it by heart. It's hidden in this little deep dive section in the new React docs, basically telling us that use ref could be implemented on top of use state. Let's try to figure out the implementation by ourselves. We can start with examination of the real use ref inputs and outputs. When we create a new ref, we pass it an initial value. What we get back is a plain JavaScript object with current property with this value inside. So in our custom ref, we know we need to accept some initial value. We know we have to create state, so we pass this value there. But wait, we don't pass it directly. We wrap it in an object inside a current property, and now we can return the state. Let's check if it works correctly. In our counter component example, we declare two refs, using regular use ref and our custom use ref. We increment them both in increment count handler, and then log them to the console and render them to the browser. We can see that they indeed behave identically over time and multiple renders. So having this internal implementation visible, we can visually understand similarities and differences between state and ref. Because we have use state inside use ref definition, both ref and state preserve their values between renders. But when using refs, we don't get set state method because we don't need it. We change the value directly, calling ref.current and equals operator. Because we are not calling set state on ref, React doesn't know that the value has changed. So no new render is triggered and the browser is not updating our view based on changes to ref. On the other hand, because we use direct assignment, contrary to set state, it's synchronous. So we can see the new value immediately after modifying it, without a need to wait for the next render. Here is a little summary, pause if you want. And there are two rules that you should follow when using refs. First, we now know that because we are using direct assignment to the current property, there is no re-render triggered by React. So our JSX will not be refreshed with the most up-to-date value and our action of updating ref will not be visible in the HTML rendered in the browser. So don't use refs for values that you want to render. Second rule is unfortunately a bit more complex to understand. Don't write to refs during render. Basically, every update in React is split into two phases. Render phase, when your component's code and returned JSX is parsed, and commit phase, when changes are applied to DOM. Actually, render phase is everything in React component besides event handlers and effects, because event handlers are evaluated after user's action, and effects are evaluated after the render is completed. So if you are writing to a ref during render, it means that you want to modify it each time the component renders. You don't want this action to be sometimes executed and sometimes not. So you basically assume that every time render starts, it should be evaluated till the very end. But with the introduction of concurrent mode, React tells us that it doesn't guarantee full start to end renders. It can stop rendering phase in any point, simply cancelling it. So from our perspective, it will sometimes process our ref assignment and sometimes not. Then your component will behave in unpredictable way because you don't control how many times your ref assignment will be executed. From my personal experience, I never had a need to modify ref inside render. Every time you catch yourself doing that, consider moving this assignment into an effect or event handler. 
As we discussed, those functions are executed outside of render phase, so they can be cancelled by React, and that's why it's safe to use ref assignments inside of them. To summarize, ref is internally a state wrapped in an object and acts by a reference to the current property.